Now, um, we, you mentioned the 80s briefly uh, earlier. So did this quality of steroids and the amounts of steroids change from in the last you know, 20 years? Uh, do we have better substances now than, than we had back then? I think we do not have the pharmaceutical. I mean, th this is a fact. After the, the Ben Johnson scandal in 1988 in Seoul Olympics, then the George Bush administration uh, applied the the anti-steroid law, as Rick Collins uh, numerous times uh, stated. And uh, afterwards, the, the medical community and the doctors realized that those who, who bought the drugs from the pharmacists were not patients who need them because doctors prescribed them, but were bodybuilders. So they started withdrawing, you know, the, some stirs like Master or, or Parabolan that was available in Belgium or in France, you know. And uh, afterwards, the underground, the underground labs start rising, you know, because they were no, no, no longer available, those substances. So nowadays, we may have a, a plethora of underground labs. The point is, with an underground labs, you may be ripped off and fake and, and everything to be faked or counterfeited. But if you have a really good chemist, biochemist or a biologist, you may produce any kind of substance you like. I see what you're saying. So you're saying back then there was more pharmaceutical grade Everything was legitimate. Also in Greece, until 2000, we had several drugs, yes. But, but now we have more knowledge about other growth factors like IGF-1, MGF, mechano growth factor, you know, myostatin inhibitors, folistatin, okay? Imagine that in Lee Haney era, until 1990, only GH was used from 1985 to 1989. And before 1985, it was taken from cadavers. Okay, there was the possibility to spread the cause for Yakos disease. Now, after Dorian's time to the 90s, there was introduction of insulin, you know, and later IGF-1 that took the, 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 the sport to another, to another level, okay? But after you had the bubble gut phenomenon because of the insulin, the IGF-1 abuse. All right? There's a, there's a common saying um, in a bodybuilding community that in the 80s and 90s, there was much, much less steroid use comparison to, in comparison to what's happening right now and in, in the late 2000s, um, you, know, or like 2000, you know, 2000s basically. Is that an accurate statement or, or? I don't think so. I mean, the golden era to me was the 70s and the 80s, the more aesthetic bodies, you know? I mean, even Lee Haney, Lee Haney at 250, he was able to perform a vacuum. He didn't have this kind of bubble gut. Uh, afterwards, in the 90s and the, in the first decade of 2000, we had this kind of freaky, in, uh, freaky appearance in the, in the definition, of course, the hardness and the muscularity. Dorian took it to another level, you know, and, Dorian, and uh, Ronnie Coleman afterwards, Jay Cutler, of course, you know. But uh, some old, old school... Uh, Bodybuilders claim, like my friend Samir Banut, say that definition and, and the separation and extreme conditioning is lost. Because you could see in the 90s, Kevin Lebroni with his chicks, you know, inside because he was performing a keto diet or uh, vegetables and fish for six weeks, you know, and the diet was really hard. Now, with all those growth factors, and some people were using even, you know, DMP, which is a uh, poison, you know, dinitrophenol, you know, to, to, to burn fat. Uh, perhaps uh, diet is a neglected parameter anymore, you know, so the, 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 they apply more drugs and the diet less. Perhaps they, they train less uh, hard also, you know, 